Hey guys, today I'm doing a mini review and feel test of the Zig brushable, um, brushables water-based markers. They are twin-tipped brush markers. One end with a Zig memory system color color the other end slightly tinted with that same color so really you get a good value with these as you get two colors in one brush pin and both ends have a fairly flexible they're not as flexible as it could be a fairly flexible brush nib there are 24 total colors and the ink inside is archival Right here, you can see I've already done a swatch test for both ends for the markers I currently own, which is Pure Red Splash, Platinum, Lunar Lavender, English Lavender, Baby Pink, Fawn, and Root Beer Float. So I'm going to be coloring this piece today. This is on Winsor Newton pigment marker paper. This is not necessarily the paper design for it. I just thought it might work pretty well. What we're going to find out together. Um, and it was inked with Sailor Mitsuo with a Sailor Mitsuo Ida brush pen, like this, which is um, both waterproof and alcohol-based marker proof. And it is also twin tipped, although the two ends are very different in size. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this erased and get it fully set up, and I'll get back to you guys. So before we get into coloring the piece, I wanted to go over a couple of things. As you can see here, I have several markers laid out. These are all Zig products. They're all ba made by the company Kuretake, um, and they're all water-based markers. These are the Zig Art and Graphic Twin. As you can see, they're twin-tipped. Um, one end is a bullet nib, the other end is a very flexible um, brush nib. It's kind of my favorite brush nib um, for these kind of water-based graphic illustration markers. And I've tested these as watercolor markers in the past. If you're interested in that, um, you should check out my blog. Next are the brushables, which we're going to be going over today. They are also twin-tipped, but like I said earlier, um, one end has one of the memory system colors, the other one has a tint of that same color. Um, much lighter though. The brush is not nearly as nice or as flexible as the one on the Art and Graphic Twin. And then the other um, Zig Family Colors, Zig Memory System brush I own is um, the Zig Clean Color Real Brush. And it has actual bristles, so it is extremely flexible. And um, there isn't yet a post at the time of me recording this. This isn't um, up on my blog yet, but I have a video for it, and I'm working on the post. I've already done the field test. So, um, as you can see, they're very different, although they're in the same um, memory system family. And I believe the brushables have the smallest color family out of all of them. There's 24 total colors. Um, the Art and Graphic Twin and the Zig Clean Color Real Brush have larger color, f l m larger color families available. So while you can't find the Zig Brushables on Dick Blick, which is kind of my go-to for art supplies, you can find them on Amazon. Just check out the anim annotation. And you can also get them, I think I got mine through Marker Pop, but it may have also, I may have gotten them from Dependable Art Supply as well. Um, and I also bought some of mine in store from my local Plaza Art Supplies. So um, if you're looking for these markers, if you like what you see, those are all places you should check out. So um, I'm going to do some preliminary tests. I've already done the swatch test where I swatched both ends of each marker. Now I'm going to do a blendability test and a water color, like um, a water solubility test. And to help me with that, I have my handy dandy trusty Tombow ABT, which I use for a lot of my water-based marker reviews. And I have a fresh, clean, hopefully working water brush. Earlier today, I had some technical issues with my old one, so I switched it out. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab an alcohol marker because sometimes the colorless blender has an effect 
on your water base markers. So we're going to start with pure red and I'm going to swatch each side and um, test them out with my water brush. Now these are not intended to be watercolor markers, but I like my, when my water base markers serve multiple purposes. And it would be nice if I could use them with my Art and Graphic Twins and my Clean Colors. So already you can see they are at least a little bit water soluble. Although there is still, even though I'm trying to apply water as soon as I can get it on paper, um, there is still a line from where my brush went down to where I started scrubbing with the water. So they're not completely water soluble or at least not all colors are. It seems like um, Platinum is doing a pretty good job. And this is Splash. Um, and I've mentioned in the past that I'm really not a fan of these sort of non-descript um, color names. As an artist, I don't find them particularly helpful. I prefer color family names. And I'm swatching this on watercolor paper, which is why it can stand up very well to the application of water. So now I'm swatching Fawn, which has a couple of nice skin tones in it. And like I said, some of these um, take to water a little bit better than others. This is Root Beer Float. Actually, I was just complaining about hating color names, but I think Root Beer Float's a pretty cute color name. It definitely does <laughs> remind me of a Root Beer Float. And I think other than pure red, most of these are inspired by both colors rather than just one side. Pure red is more of a red and a salmon. So um, root beer float does not take to water all that well. But so far, all of our colors are staying fairly true despite adding water to them. So this one is English lavender. And they also have a lunar lavender, which I'll be swatching next. And that's another reason why I'm not really a big fan of um, poetic names over descriptive names because sometimes you'll end up with like six different lavenders in your collection. And speaking of lavender, the field test illustration, or one of, I think I'm going to do several, um, to try and test out as many properties as I possibly can for these markers. Um, the first field test illustration I'm doing, the one I'm doing with you guys tonight, is of Kara in some lavender because I have so many lavenders I thought that would work really well. And this is baby pink. So it seems like the lighter colors take to water really well. Um, so that could be good because those are the ones I usually want to blend with water anyway. So next I'm going to test blendability with the Tombow ABT and I'm going to use the brush end. and. Um, I actually highly recommend this if you like using water-based markers. I found that it works really well with Crayolas on watercolor paper. With um, Target's Up and Up markers, this thing is fantastic. Um, so even if you don't own any Tombow ABTs, you should consider getting their colorless blender because it's really versatile. So let's, let's do a really strong color. Let's do pure red, the one I was just complaining about. All right, so it actually really takes well to the Tombow ABT. And I do have a little bit of schmutz on my blender pen, so I'm gonna get rid of it. So yeah, it, it blends almost better with the Tombow ABT than it does with the water. So that's something to consider. And now I'm going to try blending. Let's go, let's go pure red from this to this 
to baby pink, right? So that should be a pretty good indication. So far, it blends pretty well on its own. Maybe instead of brushables, it should have been called blendables. I am working fairly d deep into the original color just to kind of pick some up on my nib, work it out. So um, there was a little bit of a transition from pure red to baby pink right here, but it's really not a bad one. And um, there are some other reds available. I only have two of their four available red markers, which would give you eight total red tones, which isn't really isn't bad. Just because there's only 24 markers available, you really have 48 colors, which is a pretty good range. Um, and these handle really pretty well. I'm pretty impressed. I guess I could have also gone um, lunar lavender to English lavender. Do you guys want to do that? Yeah, let's do that. One successful test is not a definitive answer make. So my recommendation when you're working with water-based markers, if you need to blend a color out, is I recommend going into the darker color with the lighter color so you can pick up some of that pigment. Now, as you can see, um, English, the transition from lunar lavender to English lavender. Lunar lavender is a more gray lavender. English lavender is a more purple lavender. I really could have skipped the more saturated color and gone straight into the tint um, so it would have been a three-way blend because the transition is a little bit harsh but I only have two of the four purples I think they have four purples I'd have to double check on that one yeah it looks like four purples um, I only have two of the four purples unless they're considering one of the blues but I think I think it's sorry I think it's just purples I only have two of the available four purples yeah so there may be better blends available and I may just not have the right colors. And going back to the pure red and baby pink, it's when it dries, it's a slightly better transition. And it's hard for you guys to see, so I'm gonna have to take pictures of all this to post to the blog later. So um, that's the swatch test. Now we're gonna do the first field test. And I'm thinking there's gonna be at least two field tests, probably three. One on the Windsor & Newton pigment paper, because when I inked this, I thought it would handle these markers really well, and now I'm starting to have my doubts. Um, another one on um, probably a cold press wood pulp based um, watercolor paper, sort of like this right here, because the wood pulp based papers tend to take scrubbing from water based markers a little bit better than cotton based watercolor papers, and I want to do a direct a application. Um, and I might do a watercolor test, but considering they're part of the Zig memory system and I've already t tested the graphic twin and I've already tested the clean color, I'm pretty sure they work well as watercolors or decently well as watercolors. So I don't really want to focus on that. So I will be right back.